Okay, so here we have um, October, November 2016. Paper 4, variant 3, question number 6. I was being requested by one of the um, viewers to do question number 5 and 6. I'm going to start with number 6. Uh, the reason being, I'm going to do number uh, 5 as well, which is about probability. Is um, Right now, it's just, bef just after the paper 2 of... Um, May, June 2018, it was set yesterday, today is the 5th of May, yesterday was the 4th of May. The next exam is going to be the paper 4, which is going to be the 11th of May. There was a question on probability that came up in the paper as far as I was told from my students, so I'm assuming there won't be a question on probability in paper 4. I mean, that's like a, a guess. And there was no questions about uh, using the sine rule and cosine rule in paper 4, yes, in paper 2 yesterday, so I'm assuming there will be some sort of trigonometry question maybe without bearings because there was a bearing question yesterday so we have to um, just i'm just going to answer this one first because it's got something to do with cosine rule and so, such and such so that might um make it easy for us to uh, just concentrate on those things which we're kind of more sure will come up of course i'll answer any question that you do ask about any of these so um i just want to start with this one okay so now what we have here we're given this circle uh, with the center L and this like triangle, okay, and the straight line A, B, C, D, north line, and these lengths. So it says the diagram shows a position of a port A. So A is a port and a lighthouse L. Okay, that, and that's the center of the circle is the lighthouse L. The circle, center L, and radius for 40 kilometers shows a region where the light from the lighthouse can be seen. So it can be seen in this radius. So any, anything that's within this circle can be seen, can see the light. Anything outside the circle cannot see the light. As, as soon as they reach the circle and inside it, the light can be seen from those positions. The straight line A, B, C, D represents the course taken by a ship after leaving the port A. So this is the, this is the, this is the, uh, this is the course that the ship is going on. It's traveling along this path. Okay. Um, this, uh, when the ship reaches position B, it is due west of the lighthouse. Okay, due west means due west means that the um, the bearing is 270 degrees. Okay, that means this angle is 90 degrees here. The bearing is 270. That means that's a right angle here. Okay. Um, what else does it say? Okay. Then it says A L equals 92.1, which is marked. A B equals 61.1, which is also marked. And B L is equal to 40 kilometers, which is also marked. Use the cosine rule to show that ABL is equal to 131.130.1 degrees correct to one decimal place. So we got to use the cosine rule to show that this angle is 130.1 degrees correct to one decimal place. Okay, so the cosine rule. When we're finding a side, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. That's how I normally give it. I normally give it to my students actually slightly different because um, a lot of some people have a problem with bit mass. Let me just make that neater. Minus 2 B C cosine A. I normally say um, give this in a separate bracket and give this in a separate bracket because some people they mess up here. They'll do B squared plus C squared minus 2 B C and they'll find what that is and then multiply by cosine A. No, this is bit mass. We've got to multiply before subtracting from that. Now that's if you're finding a site, okay? Let me write that a bit neater here. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. I'm actually trying out a different pen today, so, so I'm not quite used to it. Okay, that's how I'm going to give it to you. Just make sure that they don't find all of this and then multiply by cosine A. You've got to find what AB squared or C squared is. And then you've got to find what 2BC cosine A is separately and subtract them. You calculate, we'll do that automatically anyway. Now, also, you've got cosine A. If you want to find an angle, cosine A is equal to, now this is where you've got B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So for the cosine rule, you've got to be very uh, careful. Okay, for the cosine rule, um, if you're finding a side, which you're not here, but if you're finding a side, then the angle that you know, basically you have to know two sides and you have to know the angle between them. Now this is going to be the angle A and this is going to be the side A. And these two can be B and C, it doesn't matter which, 
which one is which, okay? As long as you know two sides and the angle between them, you can find the opposite side. And that angle that is the angle that we know is the angle here. And the side in this formula, the side that we're trying to find is the one that's a subject of the formula. And if you're using the cosine rule to find an angle, then what you must do is you must look at the angle that you're trying to find. Now the side opposite the angle, which in this case is 92.1, is your A in the formula. Okay? So even though this is called A, B, C, okay, right, in a formula, this will be, the, this, this, this side will be the A. Okay, don't forget, just forget about the letters when you're answering these questions and you're using code. Forget about the letters, think about the concept. This is the angle that you're trying to find, and that must be the side opposite the angle. So if I'm trying to find this angle, that must be the side opposite. There must be opposites. Okay, so when you're dealing with this, forget the letters, the labels, and think about the concept that you have to deal with. Okay, so now, and let's go down here and just see if I can see. Yeah, all right, so move this out of the way a bit. No. Can I move this out of the way a bit? I can't. I'll put it up there for now. Okay. So now, you have cosine A, which is what we're trying to find. I'll just call this angle X. I'll say cosine X is equal to, now remember, this is what we're trying to find, which is opposite. So we're going to use these two first. That's B squared plus C squared. So you're going to have uh, 40 squared plus 61.1 squared minus, that's the side that's opposite the angle we're trying to find. 92.1 squared over 2 times 40 times 61.1. Okay, so that's, so remember, so as I was saying, okay, this is what we're trying to find. That must be in the place of the A in our formula. That only pairs once. See, the A only pairs once. B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So the other two, two sides are pair. Okay, added to each other, squared and added to each other, and two times, um, you know, the, the product of them in the denominator, and the side, the side opposite the angle we're trying to find always appears only one time in this formula, and it appears with a minus and with a squared on top. Okay, so b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc, you must know how to apply it. Even if you don't quote this formula, and you write this down, that's perfectly fine, as long as you can apply the formula, in the right way. If you write the formula down and you write all the numbers in the wrong places, you won't get any marks for that. But if you don't write the formula down, but you write everything in the right place, then you'll get the marks. Okay? So now, we've got to do this. So let's just use a calculator. Trusty calculator. Hurry up. Does it want to work or what? Come on, calculator. I'm relying on you. Yeah, there we are, a bit slow today. <clears throat> so now, you can put this straight into your calculator if you wish, like this. You can say inverse cosine, shift cosine. Then you can make your fraction. And you can say 40 squared plus 61.1 squared. And be very careful when you put these things in your calculator. It's very easy to put the wrong numbers in or miss a number or, or press the wrong number. Minus 92. 0.1 squared. Okay, that's the numerator, and the denominator was 2 times 2 times 40 times 61.1. 61.1. Then I'm going to go to the end and close the bracket. Make sure it's in degree mode, which it is, and the, then I'm going to press equals. Boom, and we see we've got the right answer. But the best thing to do is to write it down to a few more decimal places first. So you've got zero, 130, oops, 130.111. Okay. Thank you. 130.111. Okay. So now that becomes, was it 111? Let's have a look. Oh, it closed down. No, it was 130.111, and when you round that to one decimal place, it gives you 130.1 degrees, and that is what we had to show. Okay, so that's fine. If you show these steps, that's perfectly fine. For those four marks, just writing this step is, is uh, you don't have to show any steps like what 40 squared is and what 61.61 .61 squared is and all that. 
there's no need for, for you to even show that. You can just write these down, put this in your calculator, and write the answer down. Best thing when they say show that it's something for it to, to one decimal place, show it, show it so that it's more than one decimal place, and show that it rounds to it. It's always best to do that. And there we have our answer. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So that's four marks for that question. So you have to know how to use a cosine rule, how to apply it to a particular situation. Now that's part A done, and I'll do part B on a separate video. Okay.